You're watching KDKA TV 2 Pittsburgh. Shooting hoops in Hawaii may be some folks' idea of heaven, but not Magnum P.I.'s Roger Mosley. Find out how Tom Selleck's TV sidekick went from the slums to success, only to discover he still couldn't have it all. This family's surprise baby boom led to a toddler traffic jam. Discover their secret to survival and sanity tonight. We'll tag along with this local man on a trek through the woods in search of an earthy ingredient responsible for his unique art. Plus, see how this family is putting on the hog. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this special Arbor Day edition of the show. Tonight, we are celebrating the occasion in a place that is always green, the PPG Winter Garden. I'm John Burnett. And I'm Liz Miles. And did you know that it was 101 years ago that we first celebrated Arbor Day Over in this country? Century. And not only that, I can tell you that this city has one-third more trees per capita than any other city in the country. Wow. Yes veritable dictionary of tree facts. And we have more throughout the show. <laughs> <laughs> and we will tell you more. But right now, if you will, imagine having a job that paid you a six-figure salary to live in Hawaii and required you to work only eight months out of the year. Sounds like heaven to most of us. But to Roger Mosley, who plays the role of TC on TV's Magnum P.I., it's a bit of a bore. Here's evening's Pam Moore with the unbelievable story. or handicapped, serious, or silly, happy, or hurting. People who run to win or win just from the joy of running. Share the excitement. The Pittsburgh Marathon. I see golden times are near. Feel it coming, want my beer. Now this is living, now feeling fine. Get your golden, I got mine, yeah, I got my game. Got my beer, I see golden times. Icy Golden, brewed fresh and natural for a smooth and golden taste. Yeah, I got my game, got my beer. Icy Golden Times are here. Arbor Day is probably the favorite holiday of the man you're about to meet. Joe Schockner is a big fan of the great outdoors. He loves to take long walks in the woods. And it was on one such excursion that he got the idea for his unique brand of art. There in the middle of the forest, he, he saw the perfect canvas for his creation. One thing led to another, and before you know it, things really mushroomed, literally. Ah, the great outdoors. What better working conditions could one ask for? with blue sky above and crisp forest foliage crunching underfoot. Another busy work day for Joe Shackner has begun as he stealthily stalks his prey. I basically look for one about the size of a grapefruit and that they have a nice smooth face. At last, Joe spies his gold growing on the side of a fallen tree it is a mushroom. Tree fungus, bacteria, spore, call it what you will. To Joe, the face of this fungus provides the perfect canvas for an earthy craft he calls mushroom art. With the careful precision of a surgeon, Joe pries the mushroom from the tree. See, that's a nice one there with the, uh, with the bark right on there like that. <sighs> Once Joe has collected a goodly amount of toadstools, he wraps them in newspapers and stashes them carefully in his backpack for the trek home. First, they have to dry. Then I bring them in here and then dry for, for about a month or so. And then I uh, shellac them and uh, I let it sit for a day. After Joe has dried and shellacked the mushrooms, the challenge begins. With no more than a graphite pencil and a photograph, he scratches the design onto the spore's smooth surface. And after
after the image is made into the piece, I take the wood burner and I burn the picture in further. Of course, Joe doesn't stop there. Over the past three years, he's developed different techniques for his mushroom art. And those techniques include using acrylics and watercolors for extra color. So look, look what that color does to it there, yeah. It usually takes anywhere from a couple of hours to a couple of days to complete one of these masterpieces. They cost anywhere from ten to two hundred dollars. And those sales can be sporadic. They do manage to sell whenever Joe needs some quick cash. Hence their nickname of Magic Mushrooms. Finally, Joe etches in his trademark signature of Seppi, which means Joe in German. I like going out in the woods and finding them. You're out in the woods, you're doing, then you bring them in here and you use your artistic talents also in it. Turn into a nice little business. <laughs> Now, if you would like to purchase some of Joe's magic mushrooms or possibly even commission a custom-made toadstool, then give us a call at 566-ASAP and we'll put you in touch with the creator. And we are also here to attest to his talents in portraiture. Highly skilled artist. That's right. Look at these two what guys. What do you think? My only problem is I'm a little concave. Yeah, you well, know, that's the... I don't think concave is my best angle, no, but... but that's uh, the nature of the canvas. Well, there, that's true. <laughs> Maybe these guys could host the show come Monday. We will treasure these. Yes, we They're will. They're very nice. Thank, Thank you, Joe. Joe. He, is, he is a talented guy, and he even has hopes, he says, of getting national distribution for some of his art, and we wish him a lot of luck. And next up, we'll meet one of the country's most dazzling debutantes. Stay tuned. Thank you. 